Economist predicts we'll be reliving the summer of 2008, that the S&P will fall another 17%. And my man Carl writes in, he says, uh, why is so much fear talking? Why do they keep doing this? He says, and I emailed him back. It's as simple, Carl. Everyone wants to be the guy who called it. a la Robert Schiller in March, 2020. If you say everything is bad, you're never held to account when you're wrong. Look at the quote scientist unquote from the ICL, the Imperial, Imperial College of London. They're always wrong. And yet they still told us how to live our, in our society which is crazy, while the uh, chief guy, Neil Ferguson, was out there tiddling around with, uh, with married women, telling us all to stay locked down. It's the same thing here. So here's the article, and I'm not going to read this too much. Economist David Rosenberg predicts the S&P 500 will crash a further 17%, and we're reliving the summer of 2008. Um, I mean, look, maybe, I don't know, it's idiotic to say, because, I mean, have we forgotten from October 2007, to March 9th of 2009, the S&P 500 was down 54%, dude. The S&P 500 is down 18%, and we're down another 17 That's a 35% decline. That's nothing like 2007, 8, and 9. That's for damn sure. Pardon my French. Um, let's see what his reasoning is here. Now, <coughs> I'm going to show you why they do this. <coughs> yeah. He also compared this mark to the summer before the 2008 financial crisis when the Lehman Brothers went under, and then we bailed out Bear Stearns, or vice versa, it doesn't matter. We're not, let's not bail out the bankers again. Let's not ever do that again. Uh, the past two years represented a fake bull market built on sand, not concrete. Well, if you were out of the market, you didn't receive that fake bull market, did you? If you're in the market, you're still well above where you were. Um, the extent of the problem was a, the Rosenberg research founder is a market veteran of 30 years has report, repeatedly warned investors to prepare for a bear market. He cited the S&P 500's low dividend as one of the reasons he expected a 17% downturn from the current level. S&P is a puny 1.5%, he says. Bear markets do not typically end until the dividend yield converges on the bond yield. This arithmetically, arithmetically uh, means a low for the S&P 500 of about 3,300. <laughs> Historically, bear markets don't end with a 10-year treasury at 2.8 either, guy. Uh, the yield on a 10-year treasury is about 2.8, which means it's uh, competing more effectively for long-term investor cash than the S&P 500. Uh, the last time the gap between the two was this wide was in May of 2018. What happened since then? Anyway, so I, I just, I don't care. Um, what's the market doing right now? So let's take a game. Yeah, look at that. S&P 500 is up 1.75% right now. The Dow is up 1.5%. NASDAQ is up 2.25%. Gold is down. Uh, Bitcoin is down again, but uh, let's take a look what the 10 year treasury is doing. I imagine it's probably up the price, which means the, uh, the, uh, uh, the yield up, which means the price will be going down. But let's take a look. I hope it's the other way around. I hope the yields are down. Yeah, the 10 year treasury is still at 2.78, still down 45 basis points for what it was just two weeks ago. So let me show you why these guys want to be the next. So think about it. There's a guy named Irving Fisher who uh, predicted in 20, let me just read you this. Ir Irving Fisher, uh, who famously just, uh, just declared on October 16th, 1929, that the stock market had reached what it looked like a permanently high plateau. And the smart start market crashed 13 days later. If memory serves, I think he went bankrupt, actually. I can't remember, but I think he did. So no one wants to be this guy saying the markets are high. And then 13 days later, the markets crash. And everyone's remembered for predicting it wrong. All right. No one wants to be that guy. But let's look at Robert Schiller. Shall we? Schiller had written a book published in 2000 who said, warned that the stock market had become a bubble in March 2000, the very height of the market top, which could lead to a sharp decline. So what happened to Schiller? Well, everyone remembers Schiller. He called the bubble. He did because of rational exuberance. Huh. Isn't that interesting? How long did he take to write that book you want to predict? Did he write it in March 2000? No. And where is the word, the, the, the phrase irrational exuberance from? Anyone want to remember that? Let's take a look. Right there. December 5th, 1996, Greenspan talked about irrational exuberance. How do we know when irrational exuberance has unduly escalated asset values, which then become subject to unexpected and prolonged contractions? And how do we factor that assessment in monetary policy? That was the basis for Schiller's book. 
Thus, he did not just write the book in the beginning of 2000. He began researching the book well before that. I didn't read the book because, frankly, it bores me, the idea that Schiller... I got no qualm with Schiller. I use this stuff all the time. I just find it interesting uh, that we all look at the Schiller as a great you know, predictor of the markets. So we've been using his Cape value for freaking years, and it has always been... Uh, it just has never, has never done what a predictor would do. Stupid, cyclically adjusted price earnings ratio. Everybody's been using that. Say it's not that record highs. And then we can look at Siegel, who's been challenging it since day one. And then Schiller even adjusted the, the cape to reflect for current interest rates. Anyway, the point being is Schiller called it right. He did it though, because the rational exuberance was talked about in 1996 with Greenspan. So I guarantee Schiller started writing his book in 97, maybe 98. Either way, 97, 98, 99. The stock market went freaking crazy up. 2000, 2001, value stocks went crazy up too. The only thing that smoked in 2000 and 2001 was growth stocks, tech stocks in particular. That's it, man. Everything else did fine. 2002 is a different story. But by then, Schiller's book had already been two years old. Anyway, so everyone wants to be the next Schiller, calling the market decline. No one wants to be the next Irving Fisher saying the market has reached a permanent plateau. No one wants to do that. It's just we've learned this. And there's another guy, too, who wrote uh, the Dow 30,000. Damn, I can't believe I can't remember this guy. James Glassman. Let's take a look at James Glassman. Dow 36,000. James Glassman and Kevin Hassett. They had published this book in 1999, right before the decline of the, not the S&P 500, well, I guess the S&P 500, but mainly from the tech stocks. And of course, because they published that book then, they're essentially this year, this uh, era's version of Irving Fisher. But it wasn't until Dow uh, 2021 when the Dow 36,000 would be an actuality uh, reached. What happened though? Did it not? Yes, it did. If you factor in dividend reinvestments and all that stuff too, you're doing just fine. Anyway, so they got laughed at and everything. The single most important fact about stocks at the dawn of the 21st century. They are cheap. If you're worried about missing the market's big move upward, you will discover it's not too late. Stocks are now in the midst of a one-time only rise to much higher ground to the neighborhood of 36,000 on the Dow. And it was true, man. True. But no one wants to be James Glassman or Irving Fisher. Everyone wants to be uh, uh, freaking uh, Schiller. And the funny thing is, no one is held accountable when they're not Schiller, even if they've been a, a perpetual bear. So let me show you. Here's this clown, Neil Ferguson from the ICL. He also used uh, mathematical modeling, mathematical modeling to provide data on several disease outbreaks. The uh, foot and mouth outbreak in, in the UK, swine flu outbreak in the UK, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, MERS outbreak, and the Ebola epidemic in Western Africa. His work has also included mosquito, mosquito-borne diseases, Zika fever, yellow fever, dang fever, malaria. The guy's a freaking clown. He's been wrong since, I mean, he's been wronger than Joe Biden is how bad he is. And then here he was leading everyone's with a, the faulty IFR, uh, the uh, initial fatality rate when it came to COVID-19. It's freaking crazy. And everyone fell for this guy. Everyone fell for him, man. Crazy. Ugh. To this day, I'm still stunned. And then, of course, he's out there diddling with some married lady. So let's just look at his history, shall we? In April 2020, we now have the Imperial College of London's uh, Neil Ferguson, the gold standard of disease modeling, according to the New York Times and Washington Post. He's, of course, the expert whose projections of huge death tolls from COVID in the U.S. and the U.K. have supported the ongoing shutdowns. He projects as many as 2.2 million deaths in the U.S. and 500,000 in the U.K., have you actually seen what the actual deaths were in Ireland, for instance, that were nothing but COVID? Yeah, crazy. Looking back at the Guardian article, Bill observes that Ferguson had a record of making stupid worst case predictions about the threat of new viruses. Uh, Bill cites what Professor Gold Standard said in 2005 about the projected bird flu death toll. Uh, he, uh, he said up to 200 million people could be killed because of bird flu. Around 40 million people died in the Spanish flu. There are six times as many people on the planet now, so you can scale it up to 200 people dying, 200 million people dying, with a word, probably. Uh, Department of Health Contingency Plan states that anywhere there could be, uh, there was between 21, uh, uh, states anywhere that there could be between 21,000 and 709,000 deaths in Britain. Huh. But yet the actual death toll, 455. He's equally off with his death projections for mad cow disease. 
He made big headlines in the UK by predicting that the mad cow would kill between 50 and 50,000. Jeez. Millions of cows were slaughtered, but to be fair, his scientific model is right. The death toll is 178 between his 50 and 50,000. In 2000, according to the New York Times, Ferguson published estimates predicting the number of variant CJD cases might reach 136 in coming decades. 20 years later, it probably isn't too early to conclude that Dr. Ferguson's model erred on the high side of what might happen in subsequent decades. Uh, among the British publications that have recently drawn attention to his record are The Sun and the Telegraph. The Washington Post reported that Ferguson's effect in the current a crisis is a chilling scientific paper help upend U.S. and U.K. coronavirus strategy. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we got this right here. I think they took this down, actually. Michael Fomento talked about the swine flu craziness in 2009. Um, I'll, just let, I'll just post it right here. Um, Anyway, there's a some, some about Michael Fomento had posted on his website about swine flu. The whole thing's nuts. Point being is, no one wants to be uh, optimistic if it turns out to be negative. Everyone wants to call the bottom, and no one's ever held accountable for calling the bottom if the bottom never happens. It's just that simple. That's what's going on. All right, love your thoughts. We'll see you.